In Belgium, the trial of Salah Abdeslam, one of the suspects of the 2015 Islamic State attacks in Paris, has been postponed. The 28-year-old, who was not present at the court, was initially set to appear before judges on Monday. But the hearing was put back to February 5th, as Abdeslam appointed a new lawyer, so the court gave him more time to prepare the case. Investigators say he's remained silent over his role in the Paris attacks, but will stand trial over a gunfight with police. Abdel Salam, a French national but raised and resident in Brussels, fled to Belgium after the attacks in Paris, which left 130 people dead. He hid from police for months and was eventually captured after a shootout with police in the Brussels borough of Forest. Four days after his arrest in March last year, the Belgian capital was hit by another deadly militant attack. Against all odds, Ines Arimadas has been making her way into Catalan politics. Nothing could have predicted that this 36-year-old lawyer would become the champion of unionism and a favorite to succeed ousted Catalan leader Carles Puigdemont. Born in Andalusia, she arrived in Catalonia only a decade ago after studying law and an Erasmus in Nice, where she learned to master French after English, Spanish and Catalan. She's also a fan of Barca and married to a Catalan nationalist. As a leader of the Liberal Unionist Party, she's been stealing points in recent weeks from the Popular Party and the Socialists, who are also unionists. Hated by some, idolized by others, she's also showed determination in the face of sexism, with insults about being a fragile young woman. Like all women with responsibilities, she says, I've suffered attacks. We must fight for real equality. The youngest candidate in this election, her winning strategy has been to galvanize anti-independence activists by posing as the president of all Catalans, separatists or not. <laughs> Hundreds of Romanian judges and magistrates have taken part in protests in front of Bucharest's main courts. They turned out to show their opposition to government-imposed changes to the country's legal system, which are currently going through Parliament. They claim they will hamper prosecutions and restrict Romania's ability to punish high-level corruption. We're here in the interests of the people. We're carrying out our daily duties, but we would like to do our job in the same way as we've always done. Others have condemned the government for rushing through the changes, which include measures which threaten the independence of the judiciary. Even though the European Commission has many times expressed concerns over the changes and thousands of protesters have demonstrated against them, it seems there's nothing to be done anymore. Parliament's lower house has already approved three bills in the government's legal reform programme. The latest restricts presidential power in the appointment of top judges. At least three people have died after a train derailed while crossing a highway bridge in Washington state. The Amtrak train was the first high-speed commuter service to use the new track from Seattle to Portland, launched on Monday morning. About 77 passengers and seven crew were aboard when 13 carriages tumbled onto the road. Hey guys, what happened? Ah, we were coming around the corner to take the bridge over I-5 there, uh, right north into Squally, and we went on the ground. Is everybody okay? I'm still figuring that out. We got cars everywhere and down onto the highway. It's still not clear what caused the train to derail, but a system that automatically slows trains down if they are going too fast was not installed. Data shows the train was traveling at 129 kilometers per hour near the point where it derailed, but the speed limit is significantly lower. President Donald Trump. President Donald Trump has declared that the U.S. faces growing competition from Russia and China on several fronts as he laid out his new national security strategy. Addressing around 650 people, including the military's Joint Chiefs of Staff, Trump's plans reflected his America First priorities. We also face rival powers, Russia and China, that seek to challenge American influence, values and wealth. We will attempt to build a great partnership with those and other countries, but in a manner that always protects our national interest. 
Using populist language, Trump's speech was more upbeat than the actual 55-page document. The text describes a world echoing the Cold War, with China and Russia using technology, propaganda and coercion, and accusing them of making their economies less free and less fair to grow their militaries, and stressing that the U.S. will no longer turn a blind eye. But Trump ended on a familiar rallying call. Less than one year later, I am proud to report that the entire world has heard the news and has already seen the signs. America is coming back, and America is coming back strong. Ever before. God bless you. Thank you very much. The U.S. has angrily blocked a U.N. Thank Security you. Council resolution Thank rejecting you. President Donald Trump's decision to recognize North Jerusalem Station. as the capital of Israel. The 14 other members of the council voted in favor of a motion proposed by Egypt that said any decisions over the status of Jerusalem be rescinded. The U.S.'s ambassador to the U.N. was not amused. What we witnessed here today in the Security Council is an insult. It won't be forgotten. It's one more example of the United Nations doing more harm than good in addressing the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. The UN vote further isolates Washington over its recent unilateral move concerning Jerusalem, which has outraged the Palestinians. In contrast, Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu posted a thank you message on social media to the US for standing firm, saying it had lit a candle of truth and dispelled lies. Meanwhile, Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas has condemned Trump and earlier refused to meet U.S. Vice President Mike Pence, who had been scheduled to visit the region but who has now postponed his trip. With the status of Jerusalem being at the heart of Israel's conflict with the Palestinians, the Jerusalem Declaration has been met with unrest in Gaza and the West Bank, which has left at least nine people dead. Y del evidente momento un espacio comercial, ahora nuestro back nos informa en Deportivo.